Hi, Timmy. You having a nice laugh, are you? I mean, it's Christmas. It's Christmas morning. Hey! I love the way it makes me feel inside. What's up, everyone? Adam from FWCI. This is the Iron Man 3 pitch meeting from Ryan George. I am smashing through these MCU pitch meetings because I'm having a little bit of a renaissance for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've been watching a couple of these movies lately. I just watched Iron Man 3 and uh, I, I think I enjoyed it more this time around than I have any other watch through. I don't know, I, I kind of looked at it a little bit differently now. But when the MCU started, I mean, damn, I was in my mid-twenties. Now I'm pushing 40. So maybe I've just uh, developed a different taste uh, in my head. But I'm still never going to go back and watch uh, The Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton. No thanks. But I still found this movie's villain plot to be a little bit over the top with uh, Old Mate becoming, uh, you know, supercharged and all that kind of stuff. And then Pepper getting it and all that kind of biz. I don't know, I really didn't find that to be very entertaining. But Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark was great. The scenes with the little kid, I remember those being cheesy, but I found them to be a lot more, like, endearing now. And, you know, some great acting opportunities from Robert Downey Jr. I forgot that Happy Hogan nearly dies in this movie as well. That was kind of crazy. And, of course, this movie is probably more remembered, like, from a, you know, nerd standpoint for being the giant rug pull of showing us that we were going to get, is it Ben Kingsley, I believe the actor's name is, as the Mandarin and we didn't really get a good version of the Mandarin. I think they're still going to build up to that, but, I mean, what's the point? Iron Man is kaput now, so uh, I don't know who the Mandarin is going to face if they do bring it. I mean, I guess technically he could face anyone, but he was the Iron Man villain, so uh, people were not happy with this movie when it came out. I remember a first time watching it being a bit bored of him not being able to use the suit, and then him becoming like a um, secret agent all of a sudden and you know rolling around with a tranquilizer pistol and that kind of stuff now that i look back on it it's a really a tony stark movie more than an iron man movie and you know maybe it's a little bit slow but i liked it more this time watching through so let's see what ryan george has to say about this is he going to have a more refined appreciation for this movie or is he going to look at all the boring dumb shit that happens in it and, uh, you know, rip it to shreds. But let's find out. This is the Iron Man 3 pitch meeting. So you have an Iron Man 3 script for me? Yes, sir, I do. And Tony's been spending his time since the Avengers movie building a whole bunch of Iron Man suits. Oh, that's what the fans want to see. Oh, yeah. And he's going to build a bunch of different kinds of suits, too. Amazing. And then we're barely going to see them in action. Oh, is he mainly going to stick to his normal armor? No, he's barely going to wear Iron Man armor <laughs> at all. He's not. No, he's mostly going to be running around having panic attacks and crying. Well, that doesn't sound like <laughs> Iron Man at all. Yeah, well, I like to subvert expectations, you know, so people buy tickets expecting Iron Man and instead they get PTSD Tony. And you think people are gonna enjoy that? It doesn't matter if they enjoyed it. What matters is that I subverted their expectations. Well, okay then. So, and is there a bad guy in the movie? Oh, well, interesting. Is that, was that the big discussion when this movie came out? Subvert the audience's expectations, you know, don't do the typical superhero movie. Let's try and make it a bit more layered because it's still a bit of a uh, glum topic to cover. But with that being said, Tony Stark is a deeply troubled individual so it, it also makes perfect sense that we would see this side of his life affecting his superhero business we're gonna have this terrorist guy called the Mandarin. Oh, the Mandarin, as in Iron Man's greatest foe from the comics? That's the one. <laughs> well, fans have been waiting to see him hit the big screen for years. Yes, exactly. So what we're gonna do is subvert their expectations. Oh my God. Yeah, they're gonna think this guy's some amazing villain, then halfway through we're gonna be like, oh no, he's just some dumb actor guy. Maybe people would prefer to actually see the Mandarin though. It doesn't matter, because their expectations are gonna get subverted. Uh, it feels like people are gonna get mad. You can't be surprised and angry <laughs> at the same time it's scientifically impossible oh it is maybe i'm not a scientist well okay then so so what actually happens in the movie well you know how in the incredibles the bad guy becomes a villain because the superhero guy was mean to him a bunch of years ago yeah well i figured we could do something like that what do you mean by something like that i mean exactly that why would we do that same storyline again because people love the incredibles oh that's a good point the incredibles is tight and it made a lot of money which is also tight so there's a lot of tightness going around I enjoy that. Exactly. <laughs> Christ. Wow. 
Iron Man 3 ripped off The Incredibles. The Incredibles was incredibly popular. Uh, the numbers that my reaction to that movie did shocked me to my core. It was a very high performer. I'm going to attribute some of that to Mrs. Incredible. Exactly. So who's this bad guy and how is Tony mean to him? His name is Aldra Killian and Tony told him he was gonna meet him on a roof in 20 minutes and then he didn't show up. And that was enough to turn him into a villain? Oh yeah, plus he said he thought about killing himself when Tony didn't show up. Oh my god. And Tony had a one night stand with this girl Maya that same night and then she also turned evil. People were really taking stuff personally that night, huh? Oh yeah, really sensitive people. Wow. Anyway, so Killian- I mean, fair enough, but I could also understand that, you know, the two of them in the same place, getting jilted by the same guy, getting into the same business, would walk the same path. Ian and Maya put together this program called Extremis. And this thing basically lets people regrow limbs and heat up and heal and shoot fire and stuff. Okay. But also sometimes they explode, so it's bad. Yeesh, so much. what's their plan here? Well, Killian wants to kill the president. Why? Because Killian's a bad guy and killing the president is a thing that bad guys do in movies sometimes. Gotcha. And what else happens? Well, uh, that's not quite true. Killian's plan is to manufacture terrorism. Uh, on both sides and uh, his way of doing that is to get the government on board with his shit. Killian's plan was a bit mundane and like standard but it definitely wasn't he's a bad guy he does bad guy things and that's it. Well, out of nowhere, Tony goes on TV and invites international terrorists to his house. Oh wow, so I bet he goes home and prepares for battle. No, he goes home and doesn't do anything at all. What? Yeah, and then his place gets attacked by helicopters and he's all surprised. But he told them to come. <laughs> yeah, so he has a hard time fighting them because the only suit he has available is a prototype that's not even combat ready. What is going on right now? The action is going to look cool, so I'm hoping people don't realize how ridiculous the setup for it is. Oh, it's going to look cool. Okay, carry on. Yeah, so when It was a very cool looking scene between Tony and Killian. Oh man, it's gonna be hard for Tony to protect himself against a guy who can breathe fire. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, Killian can breathe fire, but he doesn't use that in the fight at all. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Fair <laughs> enough. Also, Tony's gonna have like 30 remote-controlled Iron Man suits fighting by his side. He has 30 remote-controlled suits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would he even go there physically? Because it's the big final fight, so he has to be there. Seems pretty reckless. Yeah, and we're also gonna have Pepper fall off a crane. Oh, so she's gonna die? No, luckily Killian gave her superpowers for some reason, so not only does she not die, but she comes back and kills him. That is lucky. Yeah, so anyway, then Tony blows up all his suits because he's like, we're not gonna need those again. Well, I mean, in the next <laughs> Avengers movie, he is gonna need them. Yeah, after the movie's over, we're gonna pretend like none of this happened, so it's cool. Hey, where were the Avengers in this movie? How come they didn't help with anything? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But why didn't they? That's what I want to know. Like, hey, could have used some help here, guys. So is there a good reason or there better be? Not even just the Avengers, just S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> Where, what about Nick Fury and Maria Hill and Hawkeye? What's Hawkeye doing at this point? If you ask me. Okay, never mind. Great, so what do you think of the movie? Do you think it's gonna do well? Is it gonna have Iron Man on the poster? Yeah, it'll do fine. Mm, yeah. Wow, the Billion Dollar Club! God, not only did Iron Man 3 beat the Avengers international box office opening, but something or other. Um, that's kind of crazy. I didn't realize that movie did so well. I guess it, you know, on the heels of the Avengers movie, Robert Downey Jr. was just beloved at that point. It was, again, like I say, this was like the peak of the MCU. But, wow, good for you, Iron Man 3. So, yeah, forgettable villain in this one, even though it's uh, Guy Pearce, my fellow countryman from Australia. Uh, it, yeah, I don't like it. it was It's kind of similar to Thor The Dark World. I just did the pitch meeting reaction to that one as well. Malekith's, um, like, motive and, and how he was going to execute his plan, the stakes were just way too high. And it would have definitely called for intervention from somebody other than just Thor by himself. Thor and Darcy and bloody Jane Foster and the guy from IT crowd <laughs> and Meow Meow and in the Iron Man movie yeah the, the the powers that the dude was able to give they were just way too much and I feel like honestly looking back if they could have a do-over they would include a cameo in some of these movies like Thor The Dark World you should they would have included some sort of cameo with like Nick Fury for example or get Maria Hill and some 
uh, shield goons to help out. This one here, you could have had like Hawkeye, for example, Black Widow, like any of those characters would have just uh, created more connective tissue, but the MCU would get much better at that sort of crossover appeal pretty much from the next movie. What is what is next in the chronolo chronology? Okay, so the next movie is Captain America the Winter Soldier. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna be a fun one. I have a lot to say about that. I really enjoy that movie. And again, I feel like that was, a, a lot of crossover happened during that movie, especially with the uh, TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So it turns out I was looking at the chronological order, not the release order. I should have recorded Iron Man 3 first, so I guess I'll just upload them in that order. That's gonna be confusing, but I'm sure you guys will survive. So after Thor The Dark World is Captain America Winter Soldier, then Guardians of the Galaxy, then Avengers Age of Ultron. So I'll be doing pitch meetings of all of these, all the way up until we get to the uh, Black Widow movie. I think that was the first pitch meeting that I reacted to on the channel. I don't know if I did the Avengers ones. I don't think I did. But this is just my way of reliving some of the Marvel movies and sharing my opinion on these movies with you. I have reacted to a whole bunch of Marvel stuff on the channel. I did the Marvels. I did What If Season 1 and 2, Hawkeye. Uh, I did a little bit of Loki season two. I did a little bit of Echo, the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, and I'm doing Agatha all along at the moment. It's okay, but I think it's going to pick up because I got faith in that character and I think I'm just not vibing with the witch side of it at the moment. I want to get more into the Agatha, the evil bitch side of it. But let me know in the comments what you thought about this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you do want to support the channel further, go to patreon.com slash FWCI. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends, ta-ta, and farewell.